Have you ever wondered how to connect two computers together without having to use local network? What happens if you don't have a router, a switch, a hub that can make that local network happen? Today I'm going to show you how to connect two computers using a crossover cable and transferring data. Stay tuned. make a crossover cable you can buy one already pre-made I'm going to show you how to do one by yourself then we're going to set up the static IP address for both computers I'm using my laptop here and this old desktop I already have a Linux running and I did some tests so you're going to see how this works we're going to open some some ports on the firewall and then we're going to uh, enable SSH service and we're going to uh, transfer data using SFTP. What do you need? A cable that is long enough. This is an Ethernet cable. This is a CAT5. It's not a CAT6 that would be with extra shielding. I already have one of the edges but one of the sides is a straight, it's an A standard, and we're going to do the crossover, which means we're going to take the cactus. We have four pairs, we have eight cables, copper cables inside. We do have a purpose for each one. The brown and white brown, the, the blue we usually don't use for anything. The green, they are for transmission. White green is transmission positive and green is transmission negative. White orange is for receiving positive and orange is for receiving negative. So we have here TX, RX. What we're doing in crossover, on the other side of the, the cable, we're taking this and switching sides, okay, so they can talk and listen at the same time without any collisions. If they have the same side of the cable, they are trying to transmit when the other side is transmitting, is trying to receive when the other side is waiting for receiving. That is why we switch sides in the crossover cable. A straight cable is the standard if you're using in a network because we're going to have the translation of that signal on the uh, network devices. However, if we are connecting two computers directly like we're doing now, uh, that would not work. We need to adapt the cable so that conversation can happen. One of the sides is the standard that is white green, green, white orange, blue, white blue, orange, white brown, brown. The other side for the crossover. We're going to switch white green for white orange, green for orange. The equipment that I have here to do this, I have a little cable stripper. You can use a knife if you're careful enough. Connectors this is a RJ45. We have eight pins here for eight cables. Cable tester. We have a crimper to make those pins get inside the cable, the copper. They get, have to get in, in contact with the copper. What the crimper does, it does have some uh, teeth here that is going to, to bite over the pins. This is a guide nylon cable. You can cut that. If you have a pair of scissors or a knife, you, you can use that too. Whenever you work with the cable, try to straight that as much as, as possible so we can make it easier to, to put into the, the connector.
When you do a network cable, doesn't matter if it's a crossover cable or a, a straight through cable, we're using standards for the uh, color pattern here. At the end of the day, if the for a straight through cable, if the pattern on one side match the other side, doesn't really matter, it's going to transmit signal, but it's just adding more friction to any troubleshooting you're going to do later, so don't do that. White green, green, white orange, blue, white blue, orange, white brown, brown. Then we take the connector, we cut out the excess. And then we take the connector with the, and now keeping the cables in the same order, we're going to straight up. You're going to see the, the, the brightness of the copper inside each cable here at the end of the connector. That will guarantee that they are straight, aligned, and you can crimp it. All right, it seems all crimping good. Using a regular tester like this one, it's a cable tester. We have uh, one side that does have a battery, it's going to emit some electrical signal through one side to the other side of the cable. Here we're going to see which pin is receiving electricity and what pin on the other side is receiving it. Put one side here, other side here. Did I made a straight up cable? Did I did. They are the same pattern. So I did one side. Let's do the other side then. Okay. It was not planned, but it is what it is. What is the pattern for crossover cable? White, orange, orange, white, green, blue. Come on. Come on, blue. White, blue, green, white, brown, and brown. Take the excess off. Oops. Push the cables. Come on, cables. Haha, now we got some differences here. It's doing the pattern right. We can plug this in. First thing we have to configure the static IP. There's two ways to check if you have already your static IP on the Ethernet port. One is if config a See, so I already set up Ethernet network cable port 1 slot 0 is 192.168.1. Other way to check is IP address 192.168.1.1. Sudo nano etc net network interfaces. This is the IP address that I set up earlier. IP address eth0 as the Ethernet port. It is 192.168.1.2. Uh, address 192.168. 168.1.2 and here I use an, a network mask of 255.255.255.248 usually you're gonna see 255.255.255.0 which means we have an entire subnet 254 possible hosts we don't have 254 hosts here we have two so we can use 248 as a network mask Yes, I have to restart my network. TC slash init T network restart. Yeah, it was networking. It was VI DTC sysconfig network scripts. If config ENP1 S0. Okay, we changed there for 9. It was that? For 9?
Let's ping 1.2. Ah! Now it's working! Okay. And if we get back here, mm -hmm. 192, 168.1.2, uh, 255, 255, 255, 248. Obviously, we can ping 192, 168, 11. We got it all pinging firewall. We're going to open port 22, that is the port for the SSH connection. Let's check status first. Inactive. sudo ufw allow from 192.168.12 to any port 22 sudo ufw enable mm -hmm. port 22 have a, a low n from 192.168.1.2 and that is also true for uh, our demo here that is the 192.168.1.2 ufw status it is active, it is allowing just me, the 192.168.1.1, to access uh, using SSH. Can I use Telnet to connect? No, not really, because there's no port 23 open. ETC init the SSH status. SSH daemon is running there, a sudo dnf uh, install open ssh server this is the same thing that I did here it is already installed with sudo apt install open ssh server Uh, now I can use SFTP. I don't need to use sudo here. 192.168.1.2. Yeah. Okay, now we got it. SFTP. We can use get my server file. So we're going to see LLS. My server file, it is right here. LLS is local LS. If I'm using ls, I'm doing a remote list files. Put the readme. And ls, here it is. Readme is up there. So you see, uh, sftp, it's a bit easier than using, for example, FileZilla. But you see, it's uh, just as simple as using your local directory and you put and you get files and you can do a bunch of stuff and you don't need to enable the FTP or TFTP services to run on that so it's, uh, it's a win-win situation we learned to create a crossover cable we configured the static IP addresses for both computers we also uh, set up the firewall, the use of the port 22 by the SSH, we enable the SSH server, we use it as FTP to transfer data between the, the computers. And that's it folks, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.